here's your host, Alex Garrett. Hey everybody, I'm Alex Garrett, and obviously yesterday we did not do a show because I believed in going dark for 9-11 in honor of the fallen and those innocent lives lost during the 9-11 terrorist attacks. But on September 12th, we are back on, and that means um, got some thoughts in the sports world when it comes to the aftermath of 9-11. We'll get to that Piazza home run with Lou Terminello in a second. But Ryan Clark, the former NFLer who was part of the Pivot podcast, had this great question for Derek Jeter at the Fanatics Fest 2024. And I just wanted you to hear that before we get to Terminello's take. What were some of those moments like for you? And how proud were you to be not only just an American, but a New Yorker at that time? It was the first time as a professional athlete where I felt as though it didn't matter what we were doing. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't count. You know, I mean, there's bigger issues in the world as opposed to whether or not the Yankees win or lose. And it wasn't until we had a chance to meet a lot of families who had lost loved ones. And they had told us how much joy we had brought their families and um, how they were pulling for us to continue to play well. And so we took that as a huge responsi responsibility to not help people forget, because you're never going to forget. But it, at least for three hours during the day or three hours at night, just give them something to cheer for. And, and we took that personally. And um, it was probably as, as, as electric, as energetic as I've seen the old Yankee Stadium when we got to the World Series, even though we lost. But the three games that we played in New York and the way the city rallied around us, first time we went on the road and people weren't booing us, that's the first maybe the only time I ever played in Boston where people weren't booing us because they understood that we were represented. We're all in, in this together. So it was, it was a time that I look back on, and I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but it was a time I look back on, and um, I appreciate it. I really appreciate it being a part of the Yankee organization and representing New York. You know, that's a beautiful thing. So you could tell that there was an immense responsibility, a monumental task to keep the families of 9-11 victims uplifted, the spirit uplifted, and quite frankly, this entire city uplifted. And I felt that the Piazza home run, that the Yankees World Series run did just that, and those three games at the stadium were remarkable, weren't they? Lou Terminello, I know that you have some thoughts on September 11th and the aftermath. When you just remember what happened 23 years ago, it's almost hard to believe. I, that's something I never thought could happen in the United States. And um, uh, you can't you can't shake it. You know, they you know, they always say never forget, never forget. We should never forget. And that uh, and um, the young people who weren't born yet, they really need to know the heroic people, not only in New York, but at the Pentagon in Pennsylvania um, that day. Those are American heroes that we can't forget. And uh, truly icons and, and, and really heroes. And by the way, you know, sports played a big role and we talk about it time and time again, but it's worth examining the Piazza home run, the Yankees World Series run mm -hmm. in 01. I mean, those two things really rallied the city. And, and I think in more ways than people realize at the time. Oh, 100% correct. Uh, you know, sports is still our, our getaway from everyday life. And, um, you know, at that time, we didn't know, especially that day and the day after, if that was it, if anything. Because remember, uh, they totally shut down uh, the terrorists. Totally sh shut down the uh, the air, uh, the uh, uh, planes, and uh, there was no flights for three, four days. It was it was really it was really horrendous. And uh, you know, ironically, twenty three years ago tonight, the Giants were playing a Monday night football game in Denver, um, and uh, they had lo they lost the Broncos that night. And they they flew home and they got home early in the morning 
probably around seven uh, into Newark Airport. And uh, I'm almost sure, I'm 99% sure that the Giants charter flight landed next to flight 93, which ended up going down in Pennsylvania, uh, which the passengers took down before it hit its wherever the terrorists were going to take him. And I, I think to this day, we don't know where that was going to be. Was it going to be in the Capitol building, the White House? But uh, just just a, a, just an unbelievable, just an unbelievable time for for Americans. And like I said, I never thought that could happen. Never thought that could happen in New York City. Never thought that could happen uh, in America. So, but we lean on sports to get our minds away from uh, a lot of things that happened in, in this world, but we can never forget what happened on September 11th. And sports played a major, uh, help everyone in their return uh, to somewhat normalcy. I don't know if the world has been normal since that day, um, but uh, sports de definitely played played its part into, into healing a, a little bit. But um, it was an interesting week in the NFL, Alex. Um, I, th I thought the play, as I was watching all the games on Sunday, I thought the play was poor throughout the league. I thought the quarterback play was poor throughout the league. And, um, you know, that could be because a lot of these teams don't play their regulars in the preseason. And I still understand that. And I would do the same thing. But the quality of play this weekend was not what you're going to see a month from now. And it's going to be interesting to see when the injuries com report comes out today and tomorrow um, to see how many teams have major injuries or more, I don't want to say major injuries, but more on the injury list than you normally would see on a, on a weekly basis. I know. Well, the, the, the one unforeseen was Christian McCaffrey last night and the jets. I thought they would have an advantage with McCaffrey out to be completely honest and Rogers out there. What went wrong? And I, I feel like you were right. Overreaction Monday did happen, didn't it? And Tuesday now too. Well, overreaction there's a, a lot of overreaction in a lot of uh, NFL cities uh, today, both positively and, and negatively. Um, obviously, the 49ers are the favorites to go back to the Super Bowl from the NFC. Obviously, the 49ers have their program totally set in place. Um, you know what I think of, of Kyle Shanahan. We've talked about it last year. I think he is one of the most underrated coaches in the NFL. I, uh, his game preparation is on a scale of one to 10, a 9.9. Uh, he's a great offensive coach. Uh, they, the Niners put guys in motion. They run a jet sweep. Their schemes uh, totally had the Jets off balance uh, defensively. And I was shocked that the Jet defense, which, you know, really confused Patrick Mahomes last year, Conf uh, confused C.J. Stroud in the Jets' biggest win of the year, 30-6 to six against the Texans. Had uh, Josh Allen turn the ball over on opening night last year, even after Aaron Rodgers went down. Um, you know, they were top three defense, statistically, the last two years. Last night, Alex, they were terrible. They were dominated. They were physically dominated. They didn't. They uh, put no pressure on Purdy. They couldn't stop the run game, which surprised me. Um, there was wide open receivers in the middle of the field. Now, Robert Sala was a defensive coordinator with Shanahan at the 49ers when they went to that first Super Bowl. So he should know what was, you would think he should know that what was going on and what they expect. But they were out coached last night. Uh, they were not prepared. Uh, which surprised me. I, I don't think it's something, I hope it's not something we're going to see throughout the rest of the season. And, you know, the offense was only on the field for 21 minutes. And really, let's, let's the last four minutes and 22 seconds that they were on the field with Tyrod Taylor, you could, you could uh, throw that down in the toilet bowl. The Jets really had the ball for like 17 or 18 minutes with Rodgers at the quarterback. The Jets defense was scored on eight consecutive possessions. 
um, can happen. And uh, I, I think that'll get straightened out. Now, they won't be playing a team as good as the 49ers every week. Um, but uh, the 49ers now are at a, at a time in their development where the only thing they have to do is they got to win the Super Bowl. They Going to the Super Bowl, which they've done twice, um, is not good enough. They, they could put, they had interchangeable parts. Yeah, they knew McCaffrey wasn't going to play since it seemed like since Thursday or Friday. So uh, uh, Jordan Mason, an undrafted rookie. Again, we talk about running backs. Here's a kid, another kid who was undrafted as a running back. Had 147 yards last night. And um, that's why you got to be careful how you spend money on running backs and when you pick them in a draft. But uh, they, they kick the Jets butt. There's no other way to say it. The defense really has. I would not want to be in that room when they get back, whether it's I, I assume tomorrow since they they landed at seven o'clock this morning in Newark. Um, I assume they'll be back in tomorrow. I would not I would not want to be in that defensive room. I would not. I mean, everything that the coaches rip them on. <laughs> Uh, the players have no kick coming. No one played well for the Jets defensively. They were out there. That's out. a surprise because last year they were one of the top defenses in this in the league, I felt. Right. And they were. And statistically they were. And I think this is an aberration. And I think this is a wake-up call. Maybe they were reading their press clippings as a great defense. Um, and I thought Rogers threw – now getting back to the offense, I thought Rogers threw the ball very well, which was uh, – uh, a, a positive thing, but they couldn't run the football and the Jets couldn't run the football last year. Um, even though uh, Brees Hall came within six yards of a thousand yards, but there's no opening so that they have to improve in that area. I thought the pass protection was good. He was sacked once ironically by Leonard Floyd who hit him last year when uh, he tore his Achilles uh, when Floyd was on the bills uh, there was only five pressures on him, including the sack for the entire game. So, uh, I mean, that, that, that was positive. But as I said, I wasn't worried about who they were playing in the first uh, 11 days. The fact that they're playing three games in 11 days makes every game problematic. It really does. I did not, ex I did not expect them to win last night, uh, but I expected the game to be closer. I expected the game to be more competitive. Um, and it wasn't. I mean, uh, the last two and a half quarters, uh, the 49ers did anything they wanted to do both ways, offensively and defensively. And uh, I mean, Brock Purdy knows how to run that offense. And you go back to the draft of 2022 and he was the last quarterback drafted. He was the last player drafted. You do that draft all over again. He's the first quarterback drafted. You look at that, that list of quarterbacks from, 2022 Kenny Pickett uh Ritter who's I don't think he's on anybody's practice squad you can go right down the line a uh, Skylar Thompson I believe was in that draft and he's a decent backup and he's and he's he's still on the, the Dolphins roster as their backup but the number one the number one pick quarterback that year without a doubt if you had to redo the draft would be Brock Purdy and he was Mr. Irrelevant think about that Alex um couple of things that caught my eye on Sunday. Oh, no, you're right. I, and, you know, Brock Purdy, we've had our debates, I guess. You and I have talked about him. I thought he was coming into his own and then struggled a little bit. But he is becoming a uh, a notable, not household quarterback, but he's he's becoming known a little more. And he's going to, you know. I, I, Alex, he's one of the top, he's one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL. Would you call him elite yet, though? I wouldn't call him elite yet. You know, sometimes that that word is over overplayed. He's elite for that offense. He's elite for that team, and uh, and not to go backwards, but if he was healthy most of that game against the Eagles a couple of years ago, they have a chance. I really believe that. You, Alex, actually, you beat me to it. I was going to say that if he didn't get hurt in that game, they might have been in the Super Bowl two years in a row, without 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 a doubt. Um, since he started, and I don't know the number of exact number of games he started but i would have to say it's probably probably around uh about 25 uh since he started late in 2022 
he scored 30 points, the Niners have, with him as their quarterback. 14 times he scored 30 points. No other quarterback in the league has done that. Not Josh Allen, not Matt Patrick Mahomes, not Lamar Jackson, not Justin Herbert, Brock Purdy. Um, so he's he's the real deal. They're the real real deal. And I think the Jets will bounce back. I was I was disappointed last night, as a, as as you know, I'm a I'm a longtime Jets rooter. Uh, I was disappointed that they were so ill prepared. Did you find the Niners were, and we talked about this during the last football preview, were they more disciplined? I mean, we talked about Shanahan's coaching style and how sometimes we look at the team and say, man, they're not disciplined for prime time yet, but. Oh, they you know, are. They are now. I think they're, they're there. Yeah. So. They, they are. And uh, uh, Fred Warner, three-time pro bowler, came out like a crazy man last night, set the tone for the defense. And like I said, after the first quarter, um, it was the 49ers game and they never looked back. But All right, the- well, around the league, I know we're going to get there in a second, but I have to say this, Lou. I had no problem with the Eagles winning. I mean, I have no real qualms with the Eagles. But the Giants losing and the Cowboys winning opening week killed me because, you know, I, I, a, I just don't know what it is about Dallas. I just can't stand them <laughs> personally. Well, you're a Giants fan, so uh, but, that, you know. <laughs> but to lose <laughs> that the way we lo- the way the Giants lost, and then see the way the Cowboys won, really ticked me off. I have to say, and uh, and the well, fact that I thought the actual Cowboys were going to be shakier than the Giants that's a little more surprising too. Like maybe they will be down the long run. Maybe this was just a a flash in the pan against the Browns, but you know. It, it it pissed me off that the Cowboys won and kind of shocked me at the same time. Well, let, all right, let's look at the NFC East, what happened in the NFC East this weekend real quickly. Uh, I thought the Eagles were very shaky on on uh, a Friday night. Uh, Jalen Hurts almost, for a guy who came within a couple of plays of winning the Super Bowl a couple of years ago, made a couple of horrendous throws, one across his body that, when they were up 31 to 28, that was just head scratching at this, at this point in his career. Uh, they were, to me, they, they were shaky. Um, the Cowboys, we talk about inconsistent quarterback play out throughout the NFL. And before the game started about 11 o'clock, the, uh, the uh, word came out that the Cowboys had signed uh, Dak Prescott to a 60 year a $60 million four-year contract. You see why watching the, the, the poor quarterback play throughout the league. That Prescott is good. He was second in the NFL MVP voting last year. And I've always been a defender of Zach Prescott, Zach Prescott as a quarterback. He was fantastic on Sunday. And I thought, I thought the Cowboys were going to have a little trouble on Sunday. He was fantastic. And Deshaun Watson, he looked, he looked like he had, like he was one of those rookie quarterbacks he was clueless um i don't know how good the, i don't know how good the cowboys are going yeah, i don't forward. want to make a crash joke but they don't have the massage parlor type of things in, in cleveland maybe but, that's what it is <laughs> but i gotta say this lou I, I find the browns are picking up the uh all nfl rejects now they have Kadarius tony who basically was exiled from the chiefs it's very interesting how they're trying to are they trying to be a rehab of 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 ta- I don't know exactly, but they do well, pick up some some rejects and they try and make them uh, stars again, right? Well, I mean, they want to make him a productive player. I mean, Kadarius Tony was never a star. Uh, he was a star in a figment of his own imagination and uh, and the media. He was never a star, but he's a guy who has talent. He can run fast, um, whether it's in a as a in a kick return game or as a receiver. Uh, so they're going to give him a shot. And why not? I, I would do the same thing uh, if I if I was looking for a receiver. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with him. But um, Washington looked terrible the other day. And um, Jaden Daniels looked like a rookie. I mean, all three qu- rookie quarterbacks who started Look like fish out of water on on uh, uh, Sunday. None of them looked like Joe Burrow when he. And by the way, you were the one that said, "Look out for how these three these quarterbacks 
that just got drafted start. And I guess we got our answer so far, right? We did. And, and it's not mean that it doesn't mean that they're busts or anything like that. Absolutely not. Um, but uh, Caleb Williams really was poor. But the Bears got a block punt from Jonathan Owens, married to Simone Biles for block punt that he returned for a touchdown. And Will Levis, still a young quarterback, uh, in his second year, just threw a horrendous pass with um, the Titans still ahead with 7.40 to go. That was returned for a touchdown. And um, he should have taken the sack, and Levis didn't. And he tried to try, as he was falling down, tried to make a sidearm pass that was picked off. And the Bears won a game that, that they, as they would say in sports, they stole. But, yeah, uh, but my dad would be happy about that. I mean, obviously, Caleb, my dad, a huge Bear fan, so to see them win, at least one right. of my weekend teams got, got a W. That, yeah, that's good. Yeah, well, that's, that's the that's most good. important thing. They got the del- a dealt W, and they survived, and they'll advance the next week. And and on the flip side, I mean, I thought the Titans were going to come out. Yes, they don't have Derrick Henry, but the Titans are an interesting team, right? So they're trying to rebuild, Lou. Speaking of them losing uh, and giving up 17 17- points then of course the game winning pick six will levis i remember when he got drafted there was this huge hoopla you know like this uh he had this entourage he had this big party going on when he got drafted uh kind of a disappointing start for tennessee but are we going to expect them to have some of these other games like this because they're in the rebuilding mode what do you think well, I hope they have that on Sunday because that's where the Jets go next. Uh, so I see that. I see that. Um, I, they have some talent. Um, but again, Will Levis, who uh, has an incredibly strong arm and uh, I think could be an NFL quarterback. I'm not sure yet, as with a lot of these guys, but I think he can be. Uh, he had some good games last year after he replaced Tannehill. Tannehill, as we said, is still a free agent. But, um, uh, you know, you got to remember, Will Levis, you know, I know I see you on uh, uh, TV. You, you've already, you're already doing a, a, a Mayo commercial because he's a big Mayo guy. I guess he uh, uses Mayo on everything, including dunking it in his coffee. Um, so, uh you know, we'll see. Again, did, do, do these guys read their plus clippings before they've accomplished anything? Now, did the Jets read their press clipping is going into the, the Jet defense reached their, or reached their, uh, uh, read their press clippings before going into the uh, game last night? I don't know, Alex. I don't know. And uh, so, so uh, we'll, we'll see. But uh, these rookie quarterbacks had a tough time. And uh, I'll tell you quarterbacks who did impress me. Uh, Baker Mayfield was tremendous. I know it was only against the Redskins, excuse me, against the Commanders. But uh, he impressed me. Uh, the game on, the best game of the week was the Sunday night game between the Rams and, and the Lions. Both teams are for real. Stafford, I mean, he is on a Hall of Fame path. Goff played an excellent game. Uh, both teams are gonna be playing postseason. Um, Patrick Mahomes impressed me. What could you say about Patrick Mahomes? Um, he he always he always does. But uh, uh, the, they, yeah, but the, Mahomes is it? Mahomes is getting a little bit in 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 a. Uh, I hate to say LeBron esque way with the way he complains about things and his emo- his emotion. I don't know. He's just a changed quarterback. He isn't as humble as he used to be. And that's really shocking. I thought he'd stay humble through all the winning. I thought he was going to be built differently, you know? Well, he probably figures that he's earned he's earned the right to uh to to, to speak uh and uh you know make his feelings known. Obviously he's <laughs> He's the face of the league. Um, uh, the By more- the way, can you believe that Duke is going to be impacting my whole mood this entire season? I mean, I have Notre Dame has Riley Leonard from Duke uh, transfer, and J- Jones is their esteemed alum, and he's going to drive me crazy every every 
Sports uh, every Sunday. I, I, I didn't think Duke football would have an impact on my life every week this fall, but here we are. Well, let's talk about the Giants debacle on, on Sunday. I did not expect them to play that poorly either, uh, just like I didn't expect the Jet defense to play that poorly. But it, it, in the Giants' case, um, they, they played poorly both ways. They really did. And uh, I, was, I was surprised that they played, they played that poorly. And, uh, you know, it was Dable's first game, game calling the offensive plays. And um, uh, it, was, it, was, it was not good. It, 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 was, it was not good. There were seven flags on the Giants, I think, in the first, in the first eight minutes of the game. And again, that's product of not not playing in the preseason, but um, they they, you know, they couldn't run the ball, they couldn't throw the ball. Um, their O line really didn't do a terrible job protecting Jones. I mean, so I'm watching this thing, and of course, the first quarter they caused the turnover. I think that gave a lot of people hope that this giant defense caused the fumble. And that was a great play in the Giants in the in the Vikings you know Giants red zone I guess the Vikings end and and you have Jones run it and not try it I I don't know the play uh, I don't understand the play calling there I really don't well the, again uh, you know I guess some people are criticizing the fact they didn't go to neighbors more. But, uh, you know, I, I watched most of the first three quarters. Uh, but once, once I saw that the game was out of hand, uh, there was just so many games on at the same time, I, I got away from it. Um, there weren't a lot of open receivers, Alex, for Jones. And you look at the, you look at the quarterback on the other side of the, uh, uh, of the line and Sam Darnold. Here's a guy who played a great game on on Sunday. Here's a guy who I always thought had, and who was an NFL quarterback, but going back to when the Jets drafted him number three overall, they should not have put him behind center right away. He should have been able, he, he should have watched maybe for the whole year. They should have got a backup quarterback. The Jets weren't going to win the Super Bowl that, that year anyway. Uh, and they put him in and they ruined the kid. And remember, there was they don't have the offensive weapons like they have now. There was no Brees Hall when uh, Sam Donald was there. Or or, or uh, uh, Garrett Wilson, or, or people like that. Um, he's the, the Vikings might be uh, the right fit for him. He, he threw a couple of fantastic passes right on the money. To Justin Jefferson, the touchdown in the end zone. Um, I was impressed with Darnold. I, I really was. And uh, oh yeah, Darnold actually that one. And of course, I was telling my future father-in-law. I said, look. Jefferson's a you know he was MVP candidate last year. He's not some random wide receiver. He's good for the Vikings. And can you imagine if he connects with Darnold like he did with Cousins for a few you mm -hmm. know moments there when when Cousins was on the team? I mean, look, you have that one two connection. Vikings could be very dangerous in that NFC North. I think. I think the Vikings could be. They 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 could be. Uh... A fifth or sixth seed. The, the 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 Lions, barring major injuries, are loaded. I mean, this is a year that they they couldn't uh, be playing on February 9th. They almost did last year. They almost made the Super Bowl last year. Uh, the Rams, excellent. They could. That was a great game the other night. The Rams will be in the playoffs again, always barring major barring major injuries. Uh, I think you know you can almost pencil in. San Francisco, Detroit, the Rams, even though Philly was shaky on uh, uh, Friday night, I think you can pencil them in. And then you have Dallas next, and then we're going to see who, who rises. Uh, in the AFC, Houston's going to be real good. Um, you know, Buffalo is going to be Buffalo because of Josh Allen. The thing that might hurt Buffalo, they would – rely so much on him Alex he, he single-handedly brought them back in a game that they were losing 73 to the Arizona Cardinals and could have easily lost that game um, and leaning on him um, and he does a lot of running they got to be careful there uh, Pittsburgh tough one out they are 
the mental toughness of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we talked about them always being good, no matter who they lose, no matter what happens, whether it's through free agency losing a person or through uh, uh, through an injury, they're always ready to play. And ha- uh, Tomlin always has them ready to play. And in that game against Atlanta, um, Kirk Cousins looked like a guy who was aware that he was coming back from an Achilles tendon injury. He looked he looked tentative to me. He really did. I'm sure he'll get better as you know as, as the season goes on. But he looked tentative the other night. Um, just a couple of other things that caught my eye. Only two 300-yard passes this week. Only two. Uh, there were seven 100-yard rushes. But as I was watching the game on Sunday, everybody was lining up for field goals. Not 35-yard field goals. Alex, this weekend, including last night, there were 19 field goals of 50 yards or more. The kickers have become elite athletes in their own right. Um, Brandon Aubrey kicked one from 66 yards the other day that would have tied the NFL record in Cleveland. And Dallas had a, 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 a clock violation or else he would have tied the record. Uh, NFL analytics and trackers said that the kick would have been good from 72 yards. If they're going to start kicking 65, 62 yard field goals, 58 yard field goals on a consistent basis, this is just my observation. In the next five years, the NFL will come up with some kind of rule. To- oh, I had seen that, by the way, I'd seen that a 67 yarder for Dallas. I, it's like, how far, how far back from the logo do you want to be? And, right. and it worked. He got it. He did, got it, didn't he? he? He got it, but Dallas uh, didn't get the playoff in time. So, you know, that... Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. They they got the... Yeah. And McCarthy was furious. Right. And it looked like they were going to have him kick a 71-yarder. But if, if kickers... Uh, Chris Boswell for the Steelers against the Falcons kicked two 57s and a 56-yard field goal. I mean, in the next five years, this is just me talking. I wouldn't be surprised if they put in some kind of rule to discourage field goal kicking from those distances. I don't know what it is. It's just something that I'm going to keep an eye on because, I mean, you can complete complete two passes at the end of the game and start kicking 68-yard field goals, 67-yard field goals. I mean, I think that's that's something to uh, uh, to, to look out there. Um, the most impressive teams, in my opinion, were the Niners, the Lions, the Rams in defeat, the Buccaneers, even though they were just playing the Redskins, uh, the the Commanders, and the Cowboys. They were all, point, they were all you know, impressive. You know, I think that. Th- those those games, I just think. By the way, I was just thinking of Koo, who's a great kicker for the Falcons. I li- I like what he does too, down there in in Atlanta. He's mm-hmm. he's solid for them. But no, I just think the first week was a, a bit of a confusing week in the sense of how big the scores were. I mean, the Saints forty seven points. I don't know if that's going to be an anomaly or if that's going to be the norm. I don't know if it's going to be the norm. I just felt like we have to wait for another few weeks to see where we are. But by the trade deadline, maybe we'll have a better deal. I don't like people writing off the Giants after one week. Uh, I don't like people writing off the Jets after one week. I I know that people feel like this is a continuation of last year, and maybe in some ways it is. But, you know, well, in the Jets case, I I would be shocked uh, if they if they don't bounce back. Uh, and and have a and have a real good season. The Again, biggest thing with the Jets is how strong did Rodgers look in the pocket? That's my question. Because obviously, oh, I would say I I would say he looked very strong. He just didn't get enough opportunities. But that's the thing. He if he looks strong, then the Jets are going to be fine. And you know what? We talk about the Italians here because you're a Mister Proud Italian American, <laughs> Lou. Uh, Devito will have another chance this year if things go south with Daniel Jones. The, I, the problem with that is. They can't do that because they've locked Jones in to this ridiculous contract. And that is on Joe Shane, isn't it? It is. But again, Joe Shane did put out put it out in that contract. So uh, I doubt if he'll be the giant quarterback 
next year. And I'm sure whatever cap hit they got to take, they will. They have an out to get out of the remaining uh, three years of that deal. I think it's three years of that deal. And they will, they will get out because if you saw hard knocks, um, there was no doubt about it. The Giants were trying to trade up to uh, to draft another quarterback to draft uh, to draft Drake, and I'm sure that leads to the frustration from Jones. You know, he looked of frustrated. Course. On the field too. You know, he watched hard knocks. He you know, the other thing, what, one last thing is um, off the field, Tyreek Hill in another incident, and he was back out there. It almost it's a little different because Scheffler's not a career, you know, offender. In, in and, and what I mean by that is Tyreek Hill's been known to have some mm-hmm. trouble with mm-hmm. the law, not that Scheffler has. But like Scheffler, he's back out there playing. I, I found that fascinating. He's ha- he's handcuffed that he's back on the field. It's amazing um, how those few hours transpired. Uh, it, it just – if you're the Dolphins, how do you handle that kind of character? That's my question. Well, the thing is, this is how you handle it. Um, after – Travis Etienne fumbled in the end zone, which would have put Jacksonville up 24 to seven and probably clinched the game for them. Uh, two plays later, Tua hits uh, Tyreek Hill down the left sideline for an 80 yard touchdown pass. Yes, they know that he has a pass. Yes, they never know what they might get a phone call at what time that something ha- happened to Hill as far as uh, something no good. But um, uh, he can play. The NFL plays vote him the best player in the league. I disagree with him. Mahomes is the best player in the league. But uh, Tyreek Hill is an MVP candidate all the time. So teams have a way to turn their head when a guy has that much talent. If he was Kadarius Toney, he'd be on somebody's practice squad. Like we, we kind of rounded out that earlier, the, the, the Browns have now picked them up and we'll see what they right. do with them. By the way, speaking of the Chiefs, one more time. I'm very happy that Taylor Swift is not like the storyline. Now it's back to football. And she's just part of the Chiefs family now. And I think that's the way it should be. It shouldn't be all about the Taylor Swift show. It should be, all right, she's supporting Travis. That's the way it should be phrased nowadays because it seems like she's just settled in there with him. Yeah, I, 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 I would say so. I mean, uh, I really don't – I don't really care one way or the other. Um, if I was a Chief fan, I would just want to see uh, the Chiefs win, and obviously they will, and they, they're they the best team in the league along with the Niners. So uh, – And know, we so, didn't get to this. Brady's first time behind the mic. I, I did not get a chance to hear it. What did you think of how he called the game? I thought it was very average. I thought he sounded like a rookie. And I'm not, that doesn't mean he can't be a great analyst, but um, uh, he was, for the most part, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, definitive in, in a lot of his on-field opinions. Now, the game wasn't close, so it wasn't like uh, um, there was a fourth and one at the end of the game, and should they go for it, should they uh, kick, should they do this, or should they do that? So there was no strategy opinions that came from uh, uh, from Brady, but I thought he was nervous. I really did, Alex. I thought that, uh, uh, and you know, he's still trying to buy a piece of the Las Vegas Raiders, which if he does, I think will limit some of the things he could say as a color commentator. A hundred percent. I remember when the whole thing with Gruden, why is he hype? You know, Gruden was criticized for sounding like a coach because he wanted to be hired again. He wasn't able to be like the guy to talk to anything because he was so biased, you know? So it's just, it's, um, it, it is a conflict of interest there. And I wonder if that'll change even Fox's plan with having him on in the booth. I don't know, but, um, it, I've always, I've always thought his post game interviews with, with folks were actually decent. I didn't think he was bad. Oh, I um, thought he was good post game. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. And I just look at, you know, the second coming in in AFC, which is Mahomes, he's a little gruffer with with his post game. I don't know; it's just a little different kind of style. Um, so I was thinking Brady would take the post game Brady into the booth of them, and he might, he still might, you know, give him a little time, I guess. Oh, without without a doubt. I mean, without question. I mean, Aikman, who I think is the best, and I think Buck and Aikman as a team are the best team. Um, 
Aikman didn't get to where he is now uh, when he started in 1994, 95, whenever that was with Fox. So we'll give Brady a, we'll give Brady, give Brady more. As long as, and the biggest thing to speak of that is going to see how he calls a Patriot game. I'm very curious to see if he's on the Patriot game this year, how he calls that. Cause we know <laughs> when Aikman was on the Dallas Cowboys broadcast, he always was a homer for them. And he still is on Monday night football. But anyway, I would not, I, I can't agree with that, Alex. I don't think he's, he was a homer. I don't, I really don't. For the Cowboys, I, 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 I don't. Uh, that's like saying, is Kenny Albert a homer for the Rangers uh, when he's doing a Ranger game? I don't think so. Um, I did love that Kenny was the first game out uh, at the Giant MetLife save. He was there for the 100th season opener. I mean, that would, of course, Kenny would be there, right? That was cool to see that. So, well, so. a couple of things wrapping up on my end uh, the new rules. It seems like, at least for week one, they're going to, uh, these kickers, I've been instructed by the special teams and the head coach to kick it into the through the end zone. We don't care about this year uh, losing five extra yards from the 25 to the 30. Um, I, I mean, I did not see a lot of kick returns. Um, and uh, the other thing, I did see a couple of uncalled uh, hip drop tackles. One of them in last night's game where Michael Carter of the Jets brought down uh, Juwan Jennings, and that was a classic hip drop tackle, and the officials didn't call it. And Sunday, um, on the scramble up the middle, Josh Allen, when I was watching, definitely was brought down on a hip drop tackle. I don't remember the name. It was, I believe the uniform number was 13, but I don't remember the guy's name. I was watching uh, multiple games at one time. So, uh, oh yeah, the, the red zone and all that fun oh, stuff. Yeah. By, by, by the way, one last and, and Hanson does a great job with that. But he one does. last thing, Kevin O'Connell said, "Boy, there's been a lot of penalties this weekend. I guess the refs have to sort that out as well." Hey, one last thing, um, Lou. Yesterday, unfortunately, the Goudreau brothers had to be you know buried. I, I can't believe we're even talking about this. That's just horrible. What do you remember about Johnny and and even Matthew, who was in the Islanders organization? And I think he played for the Islanders for a little bit. What do you remember most about those two? Um, Matthew got to uh, the equivalent of double A, two levels from the Islanders. He played in the ECHL for the Islanders farm team. And, uh, and then he played in Europe for a couple of years. I never saw him play. I might have seen him play at Boston College, but I don't remember 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 him in Boston College. Johnny Goudreau, I mean, uh, was a dynamic offensive player. Two years ago, we had 115 points. Uh, he was a Lady Bing winner. Uh, he was a dominant offensive player, one of the fastest guys in the league. And uh, the Islanders came very close to signing him two years ago, as did the Devils. I think the Islanders and Devils, I think the Devils offered the most money, but um, Columbus must sweeten the pot at the 11th hour. I really thought he was going to end up with, with the Islanders or the Devils. And uh, I did see a little bit of the funeral yesterday and it was heartbreaking. I mean, it's heartbreaking. And then at the funeral, his wife makes the announcement that uh, she's pregnant with uh, Johnny and, and her third, their third child. I mean, it's just, it's just terrific. And Matthew's wife is going to have a, a, a baby in December. It's unimaginable what happened to the, to the Goudreau family. It's unimaginable, Alex. I, I don't even know how you rectify it in, in your own mind. All because someone did this. And, and by the way, Matthew's wife, widow now, is also pregnant. I mean, how horrible is that? All yeah, because no, a driver know, decided to take, yeah. to take his own hands uh, that were drunk behind the wheel. I just, it's, and you know what the problem is, Lou? To be commentary, no one's going to learn from this. No driver is going to learn from it and say, oh, you know what? If this could happen, you know, if, if I see someone else behind the wheel drunk, I shouldn't do that. I feel like no one's going to really learn. They're going to keep making these mistakes and it's horrible. But maybe, I don't know, you shouldn't drink and drive. That's the whole point. But no, I it, no one's going to learn that lesson. You shouldn't. And I mean, we see it every day, whether it's whether it's an athlete, whether it's a regular civilian, whether it's a, a woman like uh what happened a couple of weeks ago, driving the wrong way. And uh, she had been, had her license spent 56 times and she killed her nine-year-old son. 
because of her reckless driving, because uh, she was intoxicated. I mean, she should never be allowed. She shouldn't have been allowed to uh, be behind the wheel ever again. What is going on here? But. What can I say? That? And like, it just shows these guys are more than just athletes. They're people too. And that's, that's why I hate when I see fans throwing beer on the field. It's like, dude, these people are at their jobs. Okay. We don't go to your job and throw beer at you. You screw up, you know, like it's just. And you're right, Alex. And I guess coming out of uh, MetLife stadium on Sunday uh, was probably 90 minutes to two hours after the game. There were people, giant fans waiting for Daniel Jones to just to, to harass him verbally and boo the man. I mean, they, Daniel Jones knows the situation that he's in and a giant team is. He knows he's not uh, the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. So, uh, but these fans got, got to let up. I mean, I'm all, I know they pay a lot of money. I understand it. $50 to park, hundreds of dollars to sit in, in, in MetLife Stadium. I, I, I get it, but there's got to be a little humility to uh, these fans. Well, Lou, thanks so much for joining us today, as always. And we didn't have time to talk baseball, but that's fine because we'll get into that next week. I think yep. this is a very pivotal week for the Mets and Yankees to stay in that playoff race. I'm telling you, Lou, that closed door meeting changed everything for the Mets. I know you don't want to think so, but I really believe. Well, Alex, they're 25 games, over 500 since the closed door meeting. So it did something. <laughs> yes, right. It did. There you go. See, I got Lou to say it did something. I love it. All right. Terminal's take. Love you, Louie, and thanks for joining us as always. My pleasure. Talk to you next week. All right. That was Terminal Take on the One Leg Up Network. I'm Alex Garrett. Talk to you soon.